Mr. Ali, outset of this crisis, you had issued um, a statement in which you suggested it was one to the diaspora that St. Kitts was favoring pretty well, and you pointed to the fact that you, same things you just talked about in terms of moving away from sugar and looking at high-end tourism was your point at that time mm -hmm. that you were making, though. But St. Kitts is like all other destinations, though, suffering a downturn at this time. So it sounds as though your statement is not really holding up, though. No, we, we are suffering a, a downturn, expected downturn. For example, we have the figures anticipated for the next tourist season. We are going to be impacted um, negatively. But we saw during this season, that's just finished, an increase, even when other countries had already begun to close down very many of their hotels. We have seen, apart from the um, increase in the number of um, cruise passengers coming to our shores, over half a million took place in recent times. We may see a slight fall, but nothing so dramatic to, to really create um, unnecessary concern. What has been critically significant is that the investors who were here before the crisis have all continued the operations. We've just had um, over the last few years, apart from the Marriott Hotel and the casino and the golf and so forth, we've had the timeshare operation where we understand from the Marriott people that the sales here in St. Kitts and Nevis have been the, their greatest um, sales in time um, compared to other destinations around the world. And that has been very, very encouraging to us. That's why, to a large extent, even though we've seen a downturn in the hotel occupancy, because so many people have bought into the maritime share, they are still coming into the country to get their weeks of, um, of utilization of the, uh, of the rooms that they have bought. And we've seen that, of course, had kept the, 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 um, the, the industry afloat here in St. Kitts and Nevis. But the sector has been losing workers. We've had, in Nevis's case, the right. workers at Four Seasons. Well, that's, that's, that's different. That's different in right. a sense because yeah. of hurricanes. Hurricane, yes. But it still amounts to people being on the breadline at a difficult period. But what we've, what we've done skillfully here in St. Kitts and Nevis is a lot of those workers from the Four Seasons in Nevis, because they have been highly trained and experienced, a lot of them have now found work in the Marriott here in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so what you've seen is an improvement in the quality of service and also better opportunities for less trained staff to be, to be trained by those who have come over from the Four Seasons. And in all in all, it has been a very um, positive, synergistic relationship that's, that's what benefits to us despite the challenges that we face. We've seen, for example, the Christoph Harper development which promises to be, as you know, um, a very high-end type of development for us here that continues apace. The residential homes that, that, that are part of that development continue. The golf course continues to be rapidly under construction. That's a Tom Fazio um, golf course. We are seeing um, the preparations for the Mandarin Oriental that is still ongoing. And there's going to be another five-star hotel as part of that development. What we're seeing here really is, is very, very encouraging um, to us because we have seen so many other hotel sites around the world closed down. Mm -hmm. We've got um, one called the Ocean Edge development, uh, hotel development. That's continuing. Um, we've had two others in Frigate Bay area. All of them are continuing. In fact, just last week, I marveled that even on weekends, Saturdays, people are still there working. It tells you that something is really working here in tourism. That's why one of our slogans is tourism. It's working. So what about those other workers that have gone home, though? It what? wasn't just those at Four Seasons. No, there were some who were laid off from the Marriott here in St. Kitts. We had about 100 persons, I think, who were laid off. Those we know, some of them, since they were laid off, have been called back. 
Um, some of them have been absorbed into a special government program that we did put in place, again with the assistance of Venezuela and from the Petrocaribe arrangement, where we are bent on giving our young people the opportunity to learn skills. Last year in December, when there was a cry in the country about youth violence, gang violence, and so forth, we brought the entire national community together, the NGOs, the church, the chamber, business entities. And we said, let us sit down and try to understand the etiology of this and how can we really put together a comprehensive program to deal with gang and youth violence here. We came up with um, a suggestion from that um, consultation, national consultation on crime in, in December, with a view that we need to provide new and additional activities for our young people. And as a result of that, we created in February, by February of this year, we created what is called the National Youth Empowerment Through Skills Program, the YES Program, a very popular program that has come on the scene. We wanted to train about 500 young people take them off the streets, put them into um, a setting where they can learn skills and they can begin to learn some of the basic, um, basic values. But has it stopped the carnage? I mean, people are still dying on the streets of St. Kitts. This, this is still a major issue for your government it in terms still, of getting a handle on crime. It is still a major issue. Um, we've seen the carnage to some extent decreased. I'm not saying it has stopped completely, but we have not had the kind of um, the high level of homicide that we've had in the past, at this time it's a bit slow. I think more and more of these people are really getting to appreciate the need to have some discipline in going to a job at a particular time of the day actually spending your time, maybe not in a classroom, but out there in an attachment to an agency or to a private sector operation so that you can learn the skill and get into the habit of really preparing yourself for the new economy that we're creating. We have been very, very grateful here because we're giving them about $300 as a stipend every week so that they don't have to go into people's homes anymore. They don't have to be snatching people's bags. You think $300 is what they want? Do you think that will work? Well, it is working in the sense that, apart from getting that stipend, they are also learning a skill, a lifelong skill. What we've seen in particular, a lot of them have now since branched off into self-employment activities. But, but in your own words, these, some of these are gangsters. These are guys that... Uh, I said guys, maybe guys and girls, though, who yes. are bent on creating destruction and, and, and no. against law and order. Isn't no, that the not case? not necessarily, no. We've had um, the benefit mm -hmm. of the assistant director of the FBI from New York, who is now employed with us since last year, late last year, to study this very problem of gang violence. And in his report, he has provided that the gang, the so-called gang activity here, has not really taken any serious shape as we've seen gangs in um, North America or in Trinidad or in Jamaica. These are people who have no real reason to be in a gang except to be with each other. So it's not that it is gang formation based on how criminally minded you are. It's nothing like that. It's just groups of people coming together, associated with, with other, and using foolish reasons like um, a color of a shirt or something as the reason for challenging someone else who is wearing a different color. I believe we are getting to the knack of it. We've been able, since then, as you recognize, we've been able to motivate, to, to mobilize, I should say, um, a number of international presences here. Just recently, two weeks ago, we concluded what was an international, an international conference on youth violence. We had the full support of the Organization of American States that financed it, the World Bank, 
the United Nations um, Office for Drug Control, several other international and regional organizations came in to sit with us and sit with um, participants from around the entire Caribbean region and the world to study this, um, this, this troubling matter of gang violence, youth violence, and gun-related violence. Promise? Next, the focus shifts to elections, and Douglas says why he thinks a fourth term is realistic.